Well, hey everyone, this is Chris DeFerio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Mersoco, who's been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. Beautiful espresso machines designed to fit the needs of your shop. Lots of equipment to choose from. One of my favorites to recommend to people. It's just so reliable, consistent, and it's beautiful as well. I just feel like a sense of peace working on this machine. It's the Alinea PB. You know, you've got the Alinea classic look, but you've got a lot of great integrated technology that allows the barista to have a great degree of control over the extraction. And again, the consistency and reliability is unmatched. And that's just par for the course for La Marzocco espresso machines. If you want to go to lamarzoccousa.com, you can explore all they have to offer. But even better, you should reach out to info at lamarzoccousa.com because that's where you can talk with one of the salespeople. They'll talk to you about what your coffee shop is all about the size, capacity, and how to get you the right espresso machine for your cafe. That's what it's all about. They're all about service. The espresso machine is the heart of the business. And so if you want your heart to be healthy, and it feels like you got to be looking at getting a La Marzocco espresso machine there. So again, visit them over at LaMarzoccoUSA.com. Now, today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who creates custom branded mobile apps for coffee bars. With a custom branded app from Espressly, you're not just a dot on a map. When people want coffee, they open the phone, they go to your coffee shop, and they see your logo, colors, and fonts, and all this fun stuff, and they get to see your menu, and that's it. It's seamless. It integrates with Square. In fact, the loyalty program that you can get on Square is integrated fully into the app with Espressly, and that is a huge perk in terms of integration for a service to your customer where you're not only giving them some convenience, but you're also giving them a sense of place. And so if you're interested in apps and, and getting an app for your store, custom branded through Espressly, go to espressly.co, talk to them and have them get started on it today. That's espressly.co. Okay, everyone. Well, today we are going to be talking about the annual thankfulness theme Of course, the shift breaks that we do are always on Thursdays, which means every year in November, the last Thursday of November, we end up with a shift break that lands on Thanksgiving. You know, here in the States, that's a holiday just where, you know, traditionally we are reflecting on things that we are thankful for and gathering together as family and we're eating some food and hopefully having a good time with people we love. And that's the ideal, right? And so it kind of makes me want to talk about the theme of thankfulness on a regular basis. And the theme today in terms of thankfulness has to do with just taking inventory of where you are and where you've come from and who you have around you. Um, I just mentioned having people with you that you love. Now, one of the things that I talk about a lot on the show, of course, is culture. And with my clients, we often talk about the waxing, waning, you know, good times, bad times that happen in the shop. There are tensions naturally in relationships. And this is what makes coffee kind of hard, you know, because it's a people business. And it's not just a, a assembly of widgets, right? Where it's just us and a table full of stuff. It is us with people and a table full of stuff still, you know, espresso machines and coffee and, you know, hot water and steamed milk and coffee grounds and static and, you know, people that are tired and sometimes, you know, people that are happy and it goes all over the place. That is the reality of working in coffee. But I think that that is true about just in general relationships. And we should not be shocked that this is true in coffee as well. But I do want to encourage us to just believe that we can go through those hard times and not only get through it, but overcome and also take those times where we do feel like this is a hard time in in this relationship with this set of people. Maybe you're having a hard time with your peers. Maybe you're having a hard time with your boss or the boss is having a hard time with the employees. These hard times are not necessarily signs that everything is lost. All hope is lost. I don't think that that's the case. I do think that they are opportunities 
to invest further into relationships. We talk about this when it comes to disciplinary processes. You have to have some kind of a disciplinary process or a corrective process, we could call it. In your cafe, we talk about the fact that your policies need to have teeth. You need to back up your policies with some kind of a process. This process doesn't actually need to be something where you pull away from an individual more and more until they get it right. I don't think that works. You have to lean in go harder into the relationship, help them, use that position of authority to serve the individual, to bring the relationship to where it can be as much as it depends on you to do so. And people may or may not respond to that. And of course, that's why the system is there so that we actually have some step or measure to take at the end of that process. But the heart and the perspective and the mindset is there, which is we don't shrink back from challenge. We actually lean into it as a test of our actual beliefs and our values. Because we talk about community, we talk about coffee and relationships, but the reality of community and the reality of relationships is a lot less pie in the sky than our words would lead people to think. If you serve your community, you're serving all sorts of weird people and not weird people and in between people, people that might, you know, piss you off one day and people that might make you happy the next day. And the temptation is to write off these people. And what ends up happening is you basically write off everybody and you become isolated. And in your isolation, you can't really see the blessing of the relationships in the community because you see those blessings as burdens. You see those blessings as burdens because you haven't yet realized that you actually were built to bear the burden of the blessing of relationships and community as a person. I believe this personally. Just imagine that you're a car. I know that when you drive a car, you know, it's great to have a lot of gas in the gas tank. But sometimes when you have the gas tank really empty, I don't know if you notice this, but there's a little bit more get up and go in the car, right? I'm one of these people that will unfortunately let my gas tank get pretty low and like, eh, it'll be okay. (laughs) My wife's not that way. And it kind of frustrates her. I'm trying to get better, but this is the illustration I want to make. That car has a gas tank because it's designed to run on gas. And inevitably the fuel that allows that car to run is going to add weight to the car. And guess what? The manufacturers of that car already designed it to be able to optimally operate with the weight of fuel. And what fuels us in life? It's relationships. What fuels our business? Customers. Relationships with customers and each other. If you have access to relationships outside of your locality to farmers and producing countries, it's those relationships as well. Is that hard? Is it a burden? Yes. But let's not get to the point where we are considering the burden of these blessings to be simply a burden. We have to lean into those things in order to see that we have the capacity. We are in some sense designed to be able to handle these things. And when we do that, we develop a certain reflex of bravery toward the things that are presented to us in opportunities, a sort of belief that it's going to work out. And this is all kind of a precursor to an episode that is going to be shared tomorrow on Founder Friday. You're going to hear some sentiments about this from our guest, Julia Peixoto Peters, who is the owner of Peixoto Coffee. Wonderful episode. You need to listen to it. But I say all this because it is Thanksgiving here in the States, and being thankful is about having perspective. Perspective is not just being able to see. Perspective is being able to interpret. And your interpretation of what you have around you, your team, the resources you've been afforded at this moment, everything else, we can see those things as just weights, or we can see that weight as a blessing that will fuel the next year, the year after that. Things that we steward, that we're thankful for, and how we lean into these relationships will determine how strong we become, how happy we are in the process, and ultimately the success of our business and the quality of the decisions that we make along the way. If we want people first coffee shops that make an impact on our community through great coffee and great culture, then this is the kind of path that I think we need to be on. So 
just some thoughts for you on Thanksgiving. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're celebrating. And I have to say, I'm very thankful for all of you. It's been wonderful to have you as listeners. And I hope to, Lord willing, be able to continue to do this show and produce value for the community that I love for a long time. So thank you everyone for listening. And I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the shop.